So I've been delivering pizza now for a long time. And it's a job that I actually enjoy. Like, unironically. I'm almost happy when I go to work. Which is pretty good. Now, it would be the perfect job if not for, you know, customers being entitled customers. If people knew how to drive, but I suspect those things would never happen. And my first boss was an utter cunt, so, you know, dealing with that was always fun. I'm going to show you, or tell you, some of the differences between West Delivery and East Delivering, and also some customer stories. Hope you enjoy. Oi, mate, you got a lighter, don't you? You don't mind if I borrow it? You're fucked, mate! You're going too fast. Go fuck yourself. So when I do my job, I tend to go as fast as possible. Normally, if I get my jobs done, I can go home early. Now, if the night's slow, I'll slow a bit down, because I don't do tedious jobs. So when I'm delivering pizza, right? And I'll tell you this, a pizza's at its very best, tippity top shape, when it first comes out of that oven, right? After that, it's all downhill, all right? So when I'm delivering, and I get paid per delivery, I'm going as fast as possible because, well, I get paid per delivery, and because your pizza is at its best when it comes out of the oven. You know, I, I tend to care because I like pizza, I like the job, it's, it's a fun job. And believe it or not, I somehow care for you customers. Somehow. After all this time. You're, you're so lucky, you should pat yourselves on the back. Right? But... You see, unfortunately, I get to share the road with the rest of you, and you guys are, well, just garbage. Let's, let's be honest, you're all bad drivers. Australians are just horrible drivers in general. We can all agree on that, can't we? So on Perth, it wasn't too bad. I thought it was, but huh, boy was I wrong. I, then I came to Canberra and... Jesus Christ. It's like, th there's two separate types of drives in Canberra, and then there's like a thin sliver of middle ground, right? So on one hand, you've got the people who are just brain dead. Like, just utterly have no awareness of their surroundings, they refuse to go the speed limit, and they're just annoying, and they piss you off. And then all the way on the other side, you've got the white bogan Commodore, I've had way too, cr too much crystal meth, I'm gonna fucking race every cunt who looks at me. Right? There's those two types of people. Right? Those are Canberran drivers. So it's not just those two people that piss me off that I have to deal with. It's also, you know, uh, you're on a highway or a freeway or whatever, and there's that left-hand turny lane, right? So you've got, like, the three lanes. You know, you're in the left-hand lane going to turn left, all right? Then your car moves into the left-hand lane, and then it just sits in between the turning lane and then the left-hand lane. And it just sits there, sits there, sits there, and slowly turns the fucking corner. Yeah, so there's cars behind you. And, you know, that light's probably going to be green for not very much longer. And you just sitting right in the fucking middle of those two lanes is kind of a dick move. So, if we yell at you, spit at you, swear at you, you've got it coming is what I'm getting at. On the other hand, there's RNG. Now, RNG is the element which I have no control over. Sure, I can get around slow drivers and I can just avoid you know, dangerous drivers. But RNG, I have no control over, whether it be lights turning, it be raining, there just be a cyclist who's in the middle of the goddamn road, and I'm not allowed to run him over because it, it doesn't really make sense that they're allowed on the road and you have to sort of give way to them. It's like, if there's a bus, right, and they're turning, le uh, turning right, you have to give way to them, all right? It's like if there's a truck, right? You sort of, you want to give way to the bigger vehicle so it doesn't fuck up your vehicle. And then there's bicycles, which sort of don't follow any of those rules. So, whatever. Good for you, bicycles. You know, then there's the slow and fast drivers, which I've already gone over, but it, it's like the snake eating its own tail, because there's a slow driver, there's a fast driver, because there's a fast driver, there's a slow driver. You know, if people realise that they share the road with everyone else, maybe traffic would be better. I don't know. Just just a thought, alright? Me and Pookie. We added a secret ingredient. I'll give you a hint. It's semen. <laughs> it's semen. Animal semen. All right, listen up. Get some pen and paper because I don't want to say this twice. I've got some trade secrets for you. Number one, as much as we would like to, 
As much as sometimes you make it so hard not to, we do not spit in your food. Even if you are the Queen of Karens. But, but don't test me on this. Don't test, don't test anyone on this. Customer service, hospitality, any of those jobs where you have to deal with other people can be so very rage inducing that, hey, maybe we have spat in your food. Maybe, maybe we've done other things. You know, don't piss us off is what I'm getting at. It's practically impossible for a small pizza shop or a local pizza shop to keep up with the speed of Domino's delivery. Sure, they might be pretty fast, but like all things, it comes with a cost. Domino's pizza, on its best day, is just slightly better than frozen pizza. But it's fast and cheap, so whatever. Things also get a little slower, the busier they are, and I'm sure this affects Domino's as well, but like... So if we say, like, normal, the normal delivery time is 45 minutes, right? Give or take. But if we say an hour, or an hour and 25, you know, it doesn't mean that, like, the people on the bench can just rustle it up in five minutes and it sits there for an hour. No, normally it just sort of waits until A, there's a delivery driver free, or B, there's a delivery driver free, or C, and if you haven't guessed it yet, it's if there's a delivery driver free. So it just doesn't sit there on the bench waiting for someone. It usually, it puts in the oven, the delivery driver will come back, and then it goes out. All right? So if your pizza is literally a minute late, this happened to me on more than one occasion, and you call up the shop and complain, and then they call up me, and I'm literally walking up their doorstep. It can get, it can get just be patient, all right? It's a virtue. Number three. Unless it's specifically, unless you specifically order a king prawn pizza, do not, do not buy a seafood pizza from any pizza establishment. The seafood they use, unless it's advertised fresh, like literal fresh, like you live next to water and there's salt in that water and just recently they fished shit out of that water. Do not buy the seafood. It's so fucking garbagely trash to eat. Smell, cut, and put in a pizza box. Don't do it. It's hor- There's any other pizza would be better. A straight pineapple pizza would be better. Alright? Just no seafood. No. Stop it. Alright? No. Number four. Pineapple goes on pizza... Why? Because we put it on pizzas. Don't at me. That bitch at 366. So on my first delivery job, there was this one order that was constant at least twice a week. And the woman who ordered, and ordered insane amounts of soft drinks, ice creams, and ironically, not pizzas, at a pizza shop. Yep. So every couple of days, she'd order in the range of about 12 to 30 1.25 litre soft drinks, or about the same range of ice creams, the Peter's ones. This was constant for three years I worked there, and annoyingly enough, I always got her order. Don't know how, calling conspiracy, fuck you Adam. But I always got her order. I'd have to carry these drinks, which was pretty tedious, 20 of them, to her door. And then I'd be greeted by this obese woman. She was pretty big, like fat activist fat. So you knock on her door, and because of her morbidity, morbidability, she would take her time to answer the door. But once she did, and she always had one of those fly scry- uh, fly- the whatever, the see-through, the see-through flyby shit door. So like you'd see a form moving towards you, right? And it 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 didn't go from small to big, right? It was just constantly big and got bigger. And you'd be greeted by what amounts to Clive Palmer in a bikini. And it's it's almost too revealing to the point of scarring. And as I'm telling the story, I'm remembering why I haven't told this story often, because it is horrifying to remember that person. Aside from her lacking the most clothes, just any any amount of clothing, anything at all to cover up pretty much everything, she had an odour, a very distinct odour that I can't put my finger on, 
it's in the range between weeaboo and old person. Somewhere in that range. So she's pretty big, right? And engagements at her household took a lot of time, like about two minutes. Now, I know that doesn't sound like long, but to put, into per- to put it into perspective, most of my interactions take like seven seconds. All right? This woman had to walk to the door one. Had to... She forgot her key because I don't deliver often enough and she just kept forgetting that her door is locked. A lot, a lot of the times. At least a hundred. Then I have to hand her the drinks or ice creams and she would waddle away to her fridge slash freezer and deposit them. Then she'd walk up with her credit card. And the whole interaction is just extremely tedious, it's long, she smells, it's annoying. Now the cherry on top of this buttercream cake was one of the last times I delivered to her. It was business as usual, right? One pizza, one garlic bread, 24 drinks. Alright? Rock up to her door. No immediate response, so I'll wait about 30 seconds. Is usually what I do when people don't respond. And then I hear it, right? Just a minute. And then she waddles out, right? Out of her bathroom. Because, like, she's got the screen door open. Or, like, it's... I can visibly see her house, right? So she waddles out of what I assume is the bathroom. Alright? She gives me a look, then immediately looks down at the ground, and I shit you not, projectile vomits all over her floor. Like, this shit... This shit was like a laser beam of vomit. Just one thick line right down to the floor. It literally stunned me. I had no idea what to do, no idea what to say. I could I didn't even laugh. It was just so so bewildering to see this. And I I could I didn't know what to do. So as I sat there literally stunned, she she got like a little towel and started wiping it with her foot. Which was pretty pretty nasty. So Give, give her the shit, and that was like the last time I saw her. Fucking thank riddance. Sebastian. His name wasn't Sebastian, but yeah, that's what I'm going to refer to him as. So Sebastian's the one customer I absolutely dreaded delivering to. Now 366, like sure, she was tedious as fuck, but like she was at least polite. At the very least, she was polite. This fucking guy, though. Like sure, she smelled. This guy was worse. This guy was easily the most disgusting human being I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. He was exactly like fat bitch except the male counterpart. And again, he always ordered. And of course, fuck you Adam, I was always the one delivering to him, which was super annoying. So the literal first time I delivered to this cunt. No fucking answer. Literally no answer again, right? So I call this motherfucker. Goes straight to fucking voicemail. <sighs> so when when stuff like this happens, when the customer is just refusing to open the door because they rather have shit in their ears or they just don't want their pizza for whatever reason, I call up the shop. Shop told me to just wait there a minute, all right? Finally, the fucker comes out and like fat bitch, this guy is practically naked. Except this guy's odor is worse. Now, fat bitch showered, right? She had the old people smell, but she at least showered. This cunt didn't. This cunt was manky. This cunt looks disgusting. He didn't brush his fucking teeth. He clearly hadn't had a shower, and his fucking nails were long and yellow. Like, not slightly yellow, dead fucking manky ass yellow. No fucking way do I even want to touch this cunt. So, I give him the pizza. His fucking credit card fucks up, right? And he's like, oh, if you take me around the corner right, I'll get some out of the machine. Uh, okay. I really regret letting him touch my car. Yeah. So I take him around the corner, right? And there's like a literal shops literally around the corner. I lived in the area. So I was like, all right, mate, ATM's over there. This cunt takes like fucking 10, 15 minutes to get money out, right? He's like, oh, I was just having a chat with my mate. I'm like, really? Yeah, you know I have a job to do, right? And he's like, oh, sorry, bro. And we go back to his house, pay for the pizza, and then he tries to sh- start up a conversation with me, right? And at this point, I'm like, it's already been like 40 minutes. Now, normally I'd be happy, 
but like four, 30 of those minutes were spent with this fucking disgusting human. No, I gotta, sorry bro, I gotta go, it's real busy. It was fucking dead. I gotta go. So it was, it was like that, that sort of interaction there, except like 50 more times. Most of the times he had his fucking card working, but he would always just take forever to get out of his house. He'd always come out practically half fucking naked. He'd always try to stri strike up the longest of fucking conversations. And honestly, this cunt was just, yeah, oh, he was just so difficult to deal with as, as a human. Fuck me. So for this next customer, sure, they're a bit hard to deal with, but I think ultimately I'm the one at fault, I'll admit that. So, this one day I get a delivery, as one does, and I get the docket, and it's got a literal paragraph. And basically what it boils down to is, not the front house, side gate, light on, which sounds simple enough. So I drive off to delivery, and it's like 8 o'clock at night. I rock up, and I finally go around the house, and I see the light on. I also see a big sign, like an A4 sheet of paper sign that says, Beware the dog. In like big bold letters. So like, I don't hate dogs. I don't really like dogs. I'm more of a cat person. So like, and to add some more sort of backstory to this, I'd heard one time that the driver had like got a hole bitten out of his foot. Dog really was hungry for food apparently. So I wasn't too keen to traverse this distance to the back of the house. So I called her up. Mm. She doesn't pick up, so I call her again. And again. Mm. And mm. again. Lame. Whatever. Alright, so I called the boss, or the manager at the time, and we talked about it. You know, he called me a bitch a couple of times. Fair enough. Understandable. And then he was like, if you don't want to do it, you can just come back. And I was like, at this point, he'd like goaded me into doors. So I was like, no, 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 no. That's alright, mate. I'll go do it. Whatever. So I traversed down this dark corridor, and it's a lot longer than I suspected. And then, then there she is, just sort of sitting there, just like on this lounge chair. I walk up to her and go like, did you not, he, is your phone not working? So I've been calling you quite a bit. And she's like, oh, my phone's in my apartment back there. And I'm like, but why? But why? So like, I tell her about the sign and the argument gets a bit heated you know, like, I'm, I'm telling her, like, hey, could, like, there's a dog sign here. Like, we sort of take those a bit seriously. You know, she starts rambling on, like, it's not her dog, it's the owner's. And I'm like, well, that's not really the fucking point, but whatever. Then she goes, well, if you're afraid of dogs, maybe you shouldn't be delivering pizza. Kind of pissed me off, but whatever. So, I was, you know, we were discussing this. Handed the pizza, and I was like, next time, just pick up your goddamn phone. And I walked away. So the next day when I came into work, the boss and me had a good laugh at this big, giant, fucking thousand-word essay review that she put on, like, Eat Now or whatever. It was... it was... I didn't read it, but, like, what the boss was telling me about it, and it was pretty funny. She went into great detail about how useless I was, so that was pretty fun. This is the last annoying customer I had to deal with. So at my second pizza job, one night, it was pretty dead. And then the Eat Now uh, machine starts ringing or whatever does its thing. so i get this docket and i read it out and the guy's like can you send pizza for free so he put cash on the order we don't have any money so i'm like all right well we can't do that just on principle so i give him a call and i'm like hey bro we we can't do that it's against policy because you know why would we send it out for free anyway so he tries to explain oh i've got no money oh you have like a you have a returning customer, make the customer happy, mate. Yeah, just just send it out, alright? And like, not not that I don't trust you at all, just some random ass dude, an address I haven't seen before, but like, just the way he was going, the, the way he was talking, right? The sort of, the sound of his voice, I was like, he was so sure I was going to do it. And the way he was like carrying on, like, oh yeah, yeah, mate, it'll be fine, just next week. Just like, that sort of like shit-eating grin attitude. So I was like, ah, oh, no, that's just not happening. So he starts going at me, he's like, oh, why the fuck not, mate? I'll be, like, super grateful, eh? And I'm like, nah, that's just not happening. So he keeps trying to, like, uh, tempt me, or not tempt me. Try trying to argue the point, and I'm like, nah, 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 whatever. Slam the slam the phone in his face. Not not having that shit again. So I go back and t tell my coworker, I'm like, oh, man, there was just, like, this, this cunt who just wouldn't let up on getting a free pizza. Blah, 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 blah. And then the phone rings. Mm. I'm like, alright, I'll, I'll get that, no problem. 
And it's the same guy, and he was like, oh, he's more to complain about last guy, he wouldn't give me a free pizza. And I'm like, yeah, it's me, bro. And then we, again, we had a discussion about why I can't give him a freebie and I can't help you out, and it goes against com company policy. And he kept getting angry and going on, oh, like, bro, this just ain't fucking happening, eh? Oh, fuck this guy. So, like, at a certain point, he was like, man, you just... You really press my buttons, eh? I'm gonna fuck. I know where you work, eh? I'll come down. And like, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty pissed off at this point. I'm like, all right, whatever. Come on down, mate. Let's duke it out. Fucking come on. He's like, he's going off. He's going off. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming down. Blah 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 blah. He, he didn't end up. He didn't end up coming down. By the way, like, we closed. I think an hour later, and he hadn't showed up. So we just fucked off for him. Fucking pussy. Oh, merge, merge. You had your. Come on, you gotta got seize the goddamn cab. People are so goddamn inefficient. Oh, goddamn it! I don't care if you're old, seize the gap! You old fat bitch! If you haven't already gathered, there's a lot of things to this job. Just little minute things that piss me off. But over the course of time, and of the night, and how long I've been working, and just... They all compound on each other, and I'm getting, getting a bit sick of it. Alright, so what I'd like you to do, if you've ordered pizza, and it's like night time, and it's dark, and you live in a residential area, I'm gonna have to ask you to turn the light on outside your door. Like, so, it, it it's easier to find your house, because not many people have their lights on at night, right? So if you have your light on, because I can't see the fucking number to your house, right? You, you don't have reflective paint, that shit faces the road, right? It doesn't, it's not sideways on, so I can't see it at all. And even if you did have a number, that thing's probably so minutely small that it doesn't stand out at all. So you putting on your light on, and to be fair, most people do this, I'd say 80% of people do this, but for the few of you who don't, it just makes the whole process a lot slower. And it's more annoying for me. It'd be nicer if you could just turn your fucking light on, cunt. Apartment buildings, hotel, apartment blocks, universities, they are a chore. They are huge. They literally have the smallest numbers on their buildings. Like, only a few of them have, like, big, thick numbers that you can see from the side of the street. Right? The rest of them, they're fucking tiny plaques on the side of the wall, which you'd have to have, like, the biggest fucking glasses to see. So, apart from them being hard to find, and then harder to get into, especially some of the apartment buildings or hotels, like, so one time, I was going to an apartment building, and you have to use a lift for most of them. So, you have to get buzzed in once, sometimes you have to get buzzed in twice, and if you don't, the lift doesn't work. Don't know why, probably a safety precaution, but it just sort of gets in my way, and it pisses me off. So anyway, I deliver up to this woman, yep, cheers, here's your pizza, easy peasy, and I go down the lift. So it will only let you out to the ground floor. So I'm looking at this lift, right? B2, B1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right? So I'm assuming level 1 is the ground floor. Little did I know that it wasn't at all. Some guy conveniently, like 30 seconds into me smashing a, um, number 1, trying to get out, said, oh, it's number 2 to the ground floor. So that was, that's always fun. So they're hard to find, all right? And you not giving instructions to help me find them because you assume that I live there, which I fucking don't, doesn't really help me get them there, right? So I can be going around in a circle for like literally five minutes. Now again, a lot of you help out. Not really in Canberra. In, in Canberra, I've had to give a talk to most of you. Seriously, just any amount of information helps me get to you, right? Especially with COVID and everyone's getting Uber Eats. You should sort of understand this by now. And it's kind of baffling and bewildering that I still have to tell people, hey, just for... Because I'm not going to always be the delivery driver who remembers your address. Just any amount of text helps out, right? <sighs> but at least it's not as bad as universities. So on Perth, I delivered to Murdoch University. Now, if you've ever been to a university, which I suspect you have, they're fucking massive. So I get this docket. It says Unit 12 of something or other, Murdoch University. So of course I look at that and going, well, that's just impossible to find. Because I don't go to Murdoch University, so how the fuck would I find this? Anyway, I rock up to what I... I just go to the main car park and I call them. Hey, 
where the fuck's your apartment? I'm in the main car park. And they're like, oh yeah, go around here, 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 blah, 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 blah. 12 minutes later, I get them their pizza and I go, hey, next time, any amount of literal information helps out. Almost started yelling at them. Didn't, but I was really tempted to. And if you think Google Maps helps me get to you, sort of, not really, at all. Kind of, not really, no. You, like, information on the docket's the best thing you can do. Please, thank you. Terrain and obstacles. And weather, to some extent. Again, it's no one's fault, but it still pisses me off. Now, the rain, in my opinion, is like a double-edged sword. Alright? It's good, because it means the business is busy. I'm out delivering, so I'm not in the shop doing real work. Alright? The downside is, if it's heavy, I get to step out for all of five or seven to seven seconds and get drenched and then bring the water into my car. With the mud on my shoes and my car gets real dirty. But then again, on the plus side, the outside of my car gets nice and clean. So, yeah. But what also makes the rain just annoying to deliver in is because the rest of you think that you'll slide out if you go to the speed limit, which you won't. Especially because most of you are going in a straight fucking line. And just, you know, you can you can go up to the speed limit and then brake a little earlier. And then it's only really turning corners in rain. Fast, I might add. Which really spins your ass out. Now, sure, there's like zero visibility, but, you know, speed limit, please. I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but the traffic lights in Canberra are horrible. They are so ridiculously horrible. It's... Crazy that the programming was fucked up so hard. I mean, the guy who did it must have been on the finest of grass. The literal finest of grass and cooked off their ass as they programmed all these fucking streetlights. Especially around, you know, 7 to 9 p.m. is generally when I'm delivering. So, unless you're blind and you haven't noticed that there's a difference between rush hour traffic and 8 o'clock traffic... You'll notice that it's different, significantly, because there's no fucking cars on the road, more or less. So why don't the lights change their programming to facilitate people being at a light, and there being no traffic, and me sitting there for two goddamn minutes? Right? It's fucking annoying. I know it doesn't sound like a long time, but if, if you want to do me a favour, just take two minutes of silence, and tell me that that's not long. Like... Just don't put on music, just don't do anything on your computer, just sit there for two minutes and tell me that's not a long time. Speed bumps, in general, are cancer. They're such a pain in the ass, especially when you get a long road, just, just a long, just a nice long 500 metre road, and there's a speed bump every 50 fucking metres for some reason. Again, I don't know which genius thought that was a fun idea or a reasonable idea. Like, if it's around a primary school, I mean a primary school, sure, that, that that's understandable. But, you know, if it's just some random ass fucking road and you've put a speed bump every literal 50 fucking meters, so I can't go above 20 k's, fuck you. I want you to twist your neck. Just, just twist it right. I want you to keep twisting. Now, at a certain point, you might see white light. I'm going to ask you to keep twisting until you see black light and flames. Because that's where you belong. I know I've had a lot of fun bitching about customers and weather conditions and speed bumps and just all the joys of pizza delivery. But I'd also like to thank the few people who give me tips. It honestly, it it's not that it helps out. Because, it, it also helps out, but it just really feels good to do no work and get tips for it. I'm kidding. But like, it, it does, it feels real good to get tips. And thank you for all the people who put instructions on your dockets. Honestly, it really helps out my night. Keeps the stress down. Thank you to everyone who orders pizza in general. Thank you for keeping me in the job. I really appreciate doing this specific job. It is easily my most favorite job I've ever done. And honestly, I might not ever quit, because I only silly like it so much. I've done other jobs before, and nothing quite compares to this. As always, subscribe, dislike the video. If you do subscribe, turn off that bell notification thing. I fucking hate it when I subscribe, so turn it off. And 
Have a good night. Order some pizza.